we yell at ourselves. We have that voice to stop doing that. We get angry. And then we say, well, if I can't uh, stop it, I'm just going to totally ignore what my body is saying. So we numb out. And then over time, we develop strategies of dissociation from our body. And functionally, what that's doing is it's turning off those important feedback loops between our organs and our brain. And which means that the homeostatic functions of health, growth, and restoration are being compromised. But don't worry, in the mental health arena, we have other we have words for this. We call them comorbidities. So you then have, in a sense, gut problems, see a gastroenterologist. You have heart problems, see a cardiologist. You have skin problems, see a dermatologist. You have migraine problems, see a neurologist and rheumatoid uh, arthritis, all these things which have important, what we use term or we will use stress-related components. But why don't we just say what it is? Our body's in a state of threat and these systems lose their neural regulation. They stop supporting health growth and restoration. And we run to a physician to give us some medication to effectively turn off the symptoms, not improve the neural regulation. So we have to develop a different strategy of self-management. That's where polyvagal comes in because it really says these systems are integrated. You don't just have a mental health issue. You have a nervous system issue. And in the world that you sit uh, and you know, you, when you talk to people who are, have mental health challenges, what's the probability that they also have a quote comorbidity? Absolutely. Well, what fascinates me, I mean, I'm very interested in functional medicine psychiatry, which looks at sort of the biochemistry of mental health. And so it's the step of, it's a progress from our current model of psychiatry, which labels things as depression or anxiety, and then provides a pill for it. Um, in the sense that it looks at the biochemical dysregulation, whether it's in hormones or in toxins or in the gut or inflammation. But what's interesting to me is that all these biochemical imbalances actually are downstream from what you describe, which is your neural regulation and your nervous system equilibrium. And so really, I mean, would you say that downstream from this sort of endocrine disruption and gut disruption and inflammation is a dysregulation of the nervous system. And that's I would say upstream. I would say it initiates the neural system works quickly and very fast. Mm -hmm. And if it gets locked into states of threat, then you start getting all these downstream consequences. You see it in inflammation. You see it in endocrine system. You see it in the organs. But what they're telling you, all these indices are telling you is that the neural regulation of the system isn't working. So even inflammation, vagal system does downregulate inflammation. So the point is that these are predictable consequences. Now, when we move into like functional medicine or any form of treatment, people say, okay, there's an imbalance. I'm going to correct that. They're not asking the right question. The imbalance is the response. It's the body is telling you that there's something coming into the body that is a threat producing set of cues, could be a pathogen, it might not be. It can be an association uh, with something, a thought process that we're locked into that downregulates our physiology into the chronic state of threat. And now we're manifesting in these dysregulatory and imbalances or whatever metric we use.